Today's video is a long, relaxing podcast and answering all of your architectural questions as well as really getting down and discussing my architectural design process and how I design buildings. I will also explain how to choose thesis topics, how to make money online and so much more. So you can listen to this podcast when you're at the gym, while you're cooking, while you're cleaning. You can even listen to this 10 minutes a day. I hope Hope you guys enjoy this. So let's get started with the first question. We have Arif asking why in India it's a five years course. We are pretty tired. Completely understand what you mean. It is quite long. It, I think it's because of the accreditation. It takes so long because to earn the accreditation, you have to go to a bachelor degree program and it must require a, a set number of hours. Maybe it's 150, sometimes it's 120. That's just how it is. And it's not not just in India. Most countries are five years if I'm not mistaken. Here in the UK, the undergraduate degrees is three years. Afterwards, you have to do one year experience and then go do and do your master's. Uh, and then you have to do your professional exam before you can be a qualified architect. So it's also long in the UK. The next question i was just done with first year but i don't know how to move forward in the sense what should i do to develop myself in architecture and knowledge about it and thanks to you every time i see your videos it's really helpful you are most welcome thank you so much for watching and leaving this beautiful comment i think you could develop yourself by a few things you could start reading some books just have a look around the library i always go to the library and i go for one book but i end up taking three or four that's not to say that I read all of them, but at least I take them. Maybe try to get some work experience. You, you don't understand how much experience is really, really important because in the end, grades don't matter. Portfolios are meh, they're okay. They do kind of matter, but the most, the most important thing on your CV is relevant experience. Volunteer in a design workshop. Sophia asks, one of my biggest struggles is to find detailed drawings of different construction techniques. In some magazines, I can find detailed drawings, but rarely drawings of the same project at different scale. Example 1 to 5, 1 to 200. Congrats on the channel and continue the good work. Thank you so much, Sophia. Finding construction drawings is also one of my main struggles. You first understand like the different types of construction so for that i go for books uh, there's so many books i'll have them linked in the description box because i can't remember them on the top of my head explains every single construction technique in detail like foundations and walls and floors and those kind of techniques are always used like they're very common and they're good with standards and the regulations so that's one thing so if you understand those then you can do and design any building then you're gonna run into some problems like for example roof lights those are not in the architectural handbook or the construction handbook so that's when you look for different projects you can search through arc daily through images and try to find ones with construction images what i also like to do is go on pinterest and look for roof lights, construction drawings, and try to find ones that are professional projects like Arc Daily or Design. And often when you go through that website, the project that has that construction drawing, you might find other construction drawings with it. And another good tip is the construction magazines. I think that's what they're called. <laughs> I don't have the actual copies myself, I don't purchase them, but they are available online for my university, so sometimes you can access those and you can find construction drawings. Mary asks, what would you like to do as an architect in the future? Join corporation, design small objects, make your own path. To be honest, I'm not really sure. My ideal situation is to be married to... Uh, an architect as well and we both would open our own firm because to be honest as a female in architecture it's quite hard to imagine myself with a family and kids so I think that's the best option and I hope to open my own path and my own firm someday. Julie asks, trying to merge a client's opposite design desire, such as wife wants A, husband wants opposite of A. Well, I think it all comes down to compromise. Maybe try to come up with a completely different B and see if both parties like it and just try to 
communicate with both parties and try to understand why they have opposite design desires maybe maybe it's personal and the wife or the husband just doesn't want what the wife wants Naro asks hi what is your what's so far your greatest struggle in the world of visualization greatest struggle with visualization so far is trying to get things looking really accurate so it takes me a long time to develop my sketchup models and i don't get them to the detail that i would like them to be and you see such amazing renders but realistically those renders have a team working under them they spend two or three weeks trying to get the whole model done to perfect details not just one person working on it four or five so sometimes when i see those renders i feel pressured i can't do these renders on my own i struggle with presentation board layout and design a video on that would be nice thank you I actually do have a few videos on presentation board or layout designs and I'll have them in the description box for you to check out but I'll definitely do more videos on that and what I honestly do with presentation boards is just try to keep it simple we look on Pinterest for some inspiration and don't try to come up with different presentation board layouts just see some see one that you like and just do it it's not really plagiarism because it's just a layout I had a perspective and it was a very dark perspective so the black of the perspective goes into and fades into the section line which I thought was really interesting so have a look around and see some ideas on that I just recently graduated from architectural school I wanted to know your tips on getting a good job in the industry so I've uh, recently uploaded a video on getting a job in the industry I'll have that link for you in the description box but mainly is to just apply 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 and the biggest tip I'd say is if you don't hear back from any of the firms you need to call them back and ask about the progress of your application to show how persistent you are and show that you really care work on your cv work on your portfolio there's plenty of tutorials and i do hope that you get a good job in the industry how to stay focused on the project and not give it up and change everything or find bad what you designed really important to understand that you need to be self-critical so you need to have the ability to look at your project and understand what is wrong with it and how you can improve it that doesn't mean that you're giving up on project or you're changing everything i don't recommend changing everything at all and i will explain it further when i speak about concept and the design process find the good things or the things that you like about your projects and the things that you don't and try to fix it so if you have like three weeks you hate your project i've been there it's okay and to be honest i feel like sometimes we put so much pressure on ourselves to try and be perfect to try and get good grades but in the end it really doesn't matter it's never gonna be built just try to have fun with it and try to just do the best that you can and if you didn't get a good grade it's fine everyone has a bad semester everyone has a bad project sometimes people have a bad year it's okay so just put it aside move on and then the next project you can kill it so liam asks hello how much time do you spend on one video maybe you can make a video on how to be popular um i think you mean how to be popular in youtube I spend quite a bit of time trying to come up with ideas but the problem with me is I never actually do them because I just feel so stressed out because to be honest I'm just gonna be completely honest it's because I don't show my face it's quite hard to come up with engaging content that people actually watch till the end because if for example you're a channel and you show your face then that's very easy because you have that clip and then you can add a few clips here and there to explain further things they call them b-rolls so you have an a-roll and a b-roll but with me i don't have an a-roll all i have is little b-rolls and sometimes it takes so long so it is quite hard but generally i'd say maybe about um maybe two or three days to film uh get the clips do the script edit my uh, record my voice and then edit and then edit the video again so i'd say about two or three days Gotham asks, hey, trying to find a topic for video content. Well, currently I'm in a dilemma of user experiences of spaces. Anyway, I think you need to do a video on your dilemmas. <laughs> 
trying to find topics for video content i think just look around youtube and try to see what other people are doing um also look on your own channel and see what people are commenting see what people are asking you to do and that's just a great start when you find what people are looking for so for example site analysis then you could do multiple videos on site analysis that people are interested in explaining site analysis site analysis with markers with pens with uh, photoshop anything like that so don't think of it as a video like okay i did site analysis i'm just gonna put it aside think about different or multiple videos that you can add to site analysis or in the same topic that people are interested in alisa asks any advice or opinion for women in architecture we don't hear lots about female architects in my classes especially not ones with families Oh, Elisa, I understand what you mean completely because unfortunately in my class, there's only in my year, okay, we're only about seven or eight students and there's only two females, which is me and this other girl. But that other girl, her name is Izzy, actually. She's one of my greatest friends. She's actually 27 years old. The point that I want to make in this is that it's never too late to start architecture, even for females. And I understand that it's really, really hard. Even Zaha Hadid herself said that for female architects to succeed, she must not be married and she must not have kids. Get inspired by different entrepreneurs. There are so many women are successful in both their work and in their personal life. The second thing that's really important is a good partner. So that's why I said I wanted a partner who understands my struggles, who is an also an architect, for example, because that way we work on our own firm together. I'd say my advice is to not give up find different ways to collaborate and be in the field. You don't necessarily have to be an architect. You can be in architectural management, you could be in the hiring um side of things you could be in the office you don't necessarily have to be in a full-time really extensive job Matteo asks about masks so i'll have a video linked in the description box where i show a complete tutorial on how to use masks in photoshop but if you're asking about masks in a masquerade party then i'm not really sure how to answer that because i've never been to a masquerade party now we're going to answer the biggest questions that a lot of you have commented and a lot of you have been struggling with. The first question is by Juwan and Maharuk and it's basically about concepts. So Juwan asks, hi, what do you do when you're struggling with your concept? That's an area where I've had a hard time and it can delay the rest of the project. And Maharu asks how to develop a good concept for our project. That's the hardest thing in my life. <laughs> okay, so what I do when I'm struggling with my concept is think about how much time do I have left and what type of project I'm doing. If, for example, I have three weeks left and I'm working on a very big project like an urban design project it might be too late to develop your concept and just try to work with what you have and just look at the positives but if you are in the beginning of your project that's when it's a good idea to develop and start with your concept what i suggest with concepts is never ever ever change it throughout your project my hangar project so the project was built in cosford and it's a hangar project or a museum for aircrafts that were used in the war so i knew from the beginning that i wanted to design a project that shows or reflects upon the war and the sorrow so from the beginning i came up with a concept or a title called the dismantled aircraft that title could obviously change throughout the project but i never stayed away from my clear concept of war the damage that happened to these planes. How you implement that concept can change or develop throughout your project, but the concept never ever, you should never change it. So for example, if you are inspired by sustainability, how you develop your concept is you figure out different ideas that supplement with sustainability. So the plant could be shaped as a tree, it could have organic movement, you could also use technical things, could have a courtyard, it could have sustainable materials, it could look like a cave. 
but the concept never really changed of sustainability. Going back to my hangar project, the different ideas that I came up with was because it's a dismantled aircraft, so I took the shapes of the actual airplanes and then deorganized them into a new form. So each of these shapes are different spaces in the museum. One of them was offices, one of them was the workshop, one of them was the cafe area or the reception area. Another thing is this high peak of the building it kind of resembles an airplane and how it's floating in the sky another thing i also did is the basement so the basement was really dark secluded space and that space when people visit they remember and feel the war another thing that i did was this courtyard so the courtyard has an airplane in the middle which again is a floating space there's also platforms that people can walk on and they just feel like they're in a triple heighted space and when you look up you see an airplane and then you see the sky so you feel like you're flying with with the airplanes think about these different ideas on how you can develop and add complexity to the concept but never change your concept if you liked it from the beginning just stick with it and that's why i recommend in the beginning when you're trying to come up with concept is to fully spend maybe a week filling up your sketchbooks with different sketches of different concepts and i hope it helps you uow architectural insider Grishma Malina also asks about time management and also Grishma asks how to give presentation of your design. I want to hear yours, please. Um, would you guys like me to give a presentation of my designs? For example, my hangar project or my tiny houses, like to actually present them to you? I don't know if you guys would be interested, but if you do, leave it in the comments down below. To go back to time management, what I'd say is the biggest tip for time management, which may sound counterintuitive, but trust me, it works. If, for example, you have only two things to do for the entire day, I'll never do both of them. I won't do it because I'll say to myself, oh, I have 24 hours to finish two tasks. I'll just leave it the very last minute or I might not even do them at all. So the biggest tip with time management is to actually add more stuff to do on your to-do list. So if you have five or six or seven things to do, you are more likely to at least accomplish four or five of those things. And that's why they say internships, uh, any part-time jobs are really important because when you have to go to someplace else and then when you come back home, you kind of have this urgency to actually get your things done so that is why i always recommend adding more stuff on your to-do list because it makes you nervous it makes you want to finish all of those things and it makes you just overall more productive you can get a part-time job which is kind of extreme but you can also start doing something else like hobbies or joining the gym which i've recently done i've been going to the gym for four weeks now and i'm so so happy the other biggest question is design process so uh, Yudhan says, I still have not found a suitable method for me. In every project, I always feel like learning from the beginning and building ideas to application form. I mean, after some learning and assignments from lectures, I still have not found an efficient way of doing design. If yes, there is a solution or a reference that I might have to read. And Anastasia asks, Hi, I just want to thank you for your videos. You are most welcome. They are so informative and easy to understand. Thank you. I study interior architecture, so basically we miss a lot about architectural part. Haha. <laughs> So I come here to fill up those missing gaps. Not sure I got any dilemmas at the moment though. I always struggle with how to come up with a concept based on the research. So I think she's asking about also on design process and asking about concept. You're most welcome. Your fellow Russian follower from China. Nice to meet you Anastasia and thank you so much for watching my videos. Lil Smurf asks, I'm an architectural student. This semester will be my seventh semester, but until now, I don't think my design shows development. Maybe that's why the results of my project at the end of the semester will be normal and tend to be worse than my friends. Let me just stop right there and say, I am 100% sure that your projects are not worse than your friends, that you should never ever say that to yourself. I always think about stopping studying in this department. Can you share a way how to get a better design result? Thank you in advance. We've spoken about how to how to come up with a concept. Now let's speak about a design process and where does developing your concept come into play. 
So the first step when you get your project brief is to actually really understand the project brief, understand the requirement, understand who is going to use these spaces. Um, in a professional practice, you will speak to the client, you'll ask questions, you'll kind of have an idea of what the client wants. So after that, you go to your site, you do a site analysis, uh, analyze different things. And there's plenty of tutorials on my channel for site analysis, which I'll have linked for you. And the biggest problem is if you take that site analysis and finish with it and then just put it aside. That is not how architecture works. You actually need to understand your site analysis and how that site analysis informs your concept. So what you could do, which is very important, you could do it in the beginning or maybe at the end of your project is to have a sheet and say how your concept truly fits in with your site analysis or how your site analysis influenced your concept. It could be about views, it could be about topography, it could be anything you want, but you need to have a set of diagrams that show that. Another thing is really important, okay, after you do your site analysis is then you start coming up with different concepts. Like I said, you come up with, let's go on the topic of sustainability. Uh, let's say you want to be in, uh, inspired by materials, so you can do different uh, concepts. One about materials, one about the plan shape one about sections, one about elevations, like just different ideas on how you can fulfill the concept that you want. What you'll find is the concept that you like the most, you'll sketch so much in it and it will generate more ideas. So for example, let's say you are uh, you have a shape of a leaf uh, basic example your plan is a shape of a leaf that also generates different ideas so for example oh i can have organic movements i can have curvy walls i can have big curvy space and it's filled with light and it makes the air fresh and nice and then oh i can have a courtyard like the idea and the concept that you enjoy you will sketch so much and you will actually feel so excited to start working Working on this project and that is the concept that you should go with so we figured out kind of the idea or the theme of your project so let's say um a shape of a leaf curvy walls a courtyard so what do you do after that is you look for precedents on different projects that use or have the same ideas that you're trying to accomplish okay that you are trying to accomplish what i always say to my friends is your project is as good as your precedent so i always go for the most craziest projects they're special, they're, they're creative, they're amazing. I don't go with something with a simple courtyard. If that's what you like, if you like simple architecture, then that's fine. So use good quality architects, good quality sites. Don't use these random Pinterest images. Find good quality projects that are actually being built and functional and completely understand them like take them apart like understand every single line drawn on these plans like when i look at for example my greatest idol is daniel leapskind he does deconstructivist architecture but now when i actually look at his plans i know what he's trying to do and i know what those lines mean and those lines add so much complexity to your plans so afterwards you have a good amount of precedence, you are really understanding them, try to implement some of the ideas and designs. You go and then do your your sections. Now, this is just a very straightforward process, but don't feel the need to start or do the things like I'm explaining it or do the things as how I'm explaining. So for example, you could straight on from in the beginning you don't have to do any sketches you don't have to do any bubble diagrams you knew from the concept from sustainability or leaves that you wanted in the section to look like something like this and then you figure out the plan afterwards so don't try to think oh i have to start plan sections elevations you can start whichever way you want and whichever way you feel most comfortable with some people even just straight on go and do models and, and 3d renders and i don't know sketchup models it's really entirely up to you but this is just how i do it so then after i do plans i look at sections and how i develop the sections in relation to the plans Sometimes I find, okay, my sections are completely boring because my plan is boring. 
so then I work on the section and see how I can make it more interesting and that also changes the plan and I keep working on it back and forth, make models, uh, sketch perspectives as perspectives is really important from the interior and the exterior and start sketching how you want your building to look from the exterior because that will also influence your sections and just keep going plan sections and lastly your elevations now for me I don't really like elevations that much because if the plan and section is, is really interesting then the elevations kind of work itself because I play with different heights and different shapes and geometry so my elevations automatically look really interesting but if you're doing a simple project then you do have to take some time into elevations and materials and what type of uh, what style you want your building to be uh, what inspires you maybe you're inspired by modern architecture and just use those language into your elevations and just think about the kind of materials that you want to use and finally you should always remember that the design process is not really a straight line it could go up and down up and down like you could go on in circles for weeks if not months so it's really important to look at how much time you have left and if you don't have enough time then i would suggest you should just stop and just start producing your final piece because in the end it's like i said this is only uni projects they're not really professional don't put so much stress on trying to get perfect projects and perfect 90 or 100 grade it's not really that important so anyway, <laughs> to sum up, what you should do is read the brief, understand it, ask questions, and then start sketching your concepts, bubble diagrams, and then start on plans, sections, elevations, and then finally your sketch of models and your 3D perspectives. Oof, that was a long one. I hope that helps. <laughs> Okay, so the next question is between Architect and Revit, which do you excel at? And uh, Abdullah asks how to find the best softwares for modeling. Another question is which are a must try softwares for 3D renderings? So I'll definitely do a video on the best programs for architects to use. But between Architect and Revit, I'd say Revit only because I've never used Archicad. I want to say I'm fantastic in Revit, but I'm still in a beginner level and I quite like it. How do you find the best software for modeling? I would always say SketchUp or Revit. Revit is a bit more accurate than SketchUp, but SketchUp is super easy and very user friendly. So it's very easy to start building in SketchUp. So definitely try that if you're a beginner. Rhino and 3D Max are amazing, but they're so complicated. And what I found that even in professional practices, they don't use 3ds Max or Rhino. They just use SketchUp and V-Ray. So definitely just use those. Which are a must try softwares for 3D renderings? Like I said, all I use is Photoshop, V-Ray, SketchUp. I've heard about something called Enscape, which kind of is a simpler version of V-Ray. I'm definitely gonna give it a try and then see if it's any good and then maybe start doing tutorials on it if you guys are interested. Muhammad and Miss Didi asks how to make money online. There are plenty of tutorials like it's not really my expertise on how to make money online. I have definitely looked for, for a really long time on how to make money online and I've done so many things like surveys, these kind of things and I've never had any results with them. The only thing that I've actually had results from are two things which is YouTube and selling on eBay or selling on um, Depop or Vinted like used clothes and stuff like that. So I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Uh, making money with YouTube is not a lot especially for a really small channel. I'm very happy with the amount of subscribers I have. I'm so grateful to every single one of you. I think it would still be considered a relatively small channel size so to be honest i make around 150 pounds a month maybe 200 pounds if it's a good month but what i found is a good thing to make money is selling on ebay or depop or any of those apps you can sell your old furniture you can sell your old clothes or anything like that or even books so what i do is i buy things from topshop or zara i post them on ebay so you can return things between 28 days so if my items 
item doesn't sell on ebay within that amount of time i can just return the items and that's it and that is a risk-free selling process that you can actually make money on and then you can start maybe going further from clothes you can start if you're a guy obviously clothes might not be interesting big market on shoes you can then go up to maybe electronics you can go to selling cars or bikes and i wish you the best of luck okay so the last question for the day is thesis topics so lan asks so i should be doing my thesis right now i'm afraid to consult with my advisor because he might not like my draft i'm so afraid of rejection and the deadline for the first draft is in like three days please enlighten me said say <laughs> I'm doing a beach resort and a marine reserve. I'm afraid that my design would be a basic beach house. I'm afraid that my design would have nothing special. Ugh, I'm so lost. My classmates have good studies and references while I'm still at stalemate. Can't withdraw, can't change studies. I can't. It's still the first semester and the first term. I'm spiraling downwards. Um, Q8 asks, I'm two months away from starting my graduation project. I have an idea of what do I want the project to be, but hell if I know how I'm going to make a thesis of about it i'd appreciate any tips from anyone how to work on a thesis title and getting confused about choosing thesis topics so first of all lan oh my god i am so sorry you are spiraling downwards i've been there so many times in my life and i absolutely hate it but i am so confident that if you follow the steps that i mentioned in the design process or in my concept i'm sure that you can come up with something special and just try and remember that you are your own worst critique you you might think that your design might not be special then make it special or go and talk to someone who's let's say better than you or he gets better grades or maybe your professors maybe someone you really admire and then let them have a look at your project and make something you are proud of so definitely look at precedent and the one thing is i found that even if your project is let's say i'm sure yours will be i'm just saying let's say if the project is nothing special do you know what sells it is good presentation you know what sells it is good visualization skills so if for example you're afraid that your your project won't be anything special then you can believe in yourself that you know that you're gonna have amazing amazing visualization but so just believe in yourself and i am sure and i'm positive and i'm completely 100 percent behind your back and i can tell you that you will do something special obviously you can show me your project at any time and i would love to give you some feedback and just basically a fear of rejection i understand i completely understand i feel like we are connected now on a completely new level because i never ever show my projects to anyone unless i'm a hundred percent like happy with or confident with so it's also really hard for me to show my projects to advisors you know what i do at this stage i try to remember the thing i accomplished or the greatest thing i've ever accomplished in my life so for me you guys obviously don't know this but i'm a very shy person i always speak really low i always keep to myself and i'm only confident when i have people that i love around me but mostly i'm quite shy so the fact that i won the regional awards it makes me so happy and proud of myself and after i won the regional awards the um the judges called me for 10 minutes straight i am not even kidding just complimenting me on so many things i spoke as if i was to their level i was confident and passionate and it was the first moment in my life that i felt like wow why don't i have a call recorder why <laughs> Whenever I'm afraid of rejection, whenever I'm afraid that I'm not good enough or my projects are not amazing, honestly remember those 10 minutes and they put such a big smile on my face and they make me feel like I can conquer the world. So as silly as this may sound, just remember your greatest accomplishment. Maybe it's a project that you've gotten a good grade on. Maybe it's um, starting going to the gym. Maybe I'm just speaking from my experience. Maybe you've won an award, maybe you've won a competition, anything. Maybe you're just so proud of your personality and how uh, kind you are to different people. That also is a great accomplishment. Just think about your greatest accomplishment and just put your best foot forward. 
because if you are afraid of rejections it's really hard to go on in this career because you are going to get so many rejections to be honest i don't think you should even call it rejection because rejection means that <laughs> this is what comes to mind rejection means that you had a romantic interest and they rejected you this is how i feel and that brings so much heartache and so much ah. but i think you should call it is constructive criticism and never look at it as it's something personal if they reject or they don't like your ideas it's nothing personal it's nothing about you it's literally only because they want to see you do a better job they want to see your full potential so i hope that helps and i just want you to feel that you are 100 supported by me and everyone every single one on this channel because everyone on this channel this similar fear of people not liking my ideas and i am sure your instructor will love your ideas even if he has a few uh, things to change that's okay just change it work on your concept you should always be in this motion of okay developing okay making my project better go on like that and i really hope that helps and i don't ever ever want you to say that your designs are nothing special and i don't ever want to say that you're spiraling downwards just try to be positive what i would suggest on thesis topics is to look online and just look at different thesis topics that you might find interesting now you should always think about your passion and where it lies in this field maybe it's about urban design maybe it's sustainability maybe it's infrastructures and how the road system works maybe it's materials pick your interests and try to come up with a thesis topic or find thesis topics that are related to your interests at our university we have to submit i think um a 1000 word document on saying why which is also graded on why do we want to to do this topic and how it's going to be beneficial to us so that's why it's so important for you to not only choose a a topic that you are passionate about but choose a topic that can actually help you so for example if you um <laughs> i feel like this video is all about sustainability but for example let's go with sustainability sustainability you could have a topic on bim which is also this uh, big thing in architecture at the moment because not only are those really important but because these are gonna gain you so much knowledge in sustainability and bim and those are actually what the job in the current present and in the future need people want people who are aware of creating sustainable buildings people want people to know how to use bim if you know what i mean this is the big secret from now on like no one is really gonna care about grades or portfolios or anything like that people are going to care most about your uh, dissertation spend some time trying to figure out what does this industry need what am i passionate about what and how can i impact this industry and also you must be very careful and choose a topic where you can actually find relevant information to choose a topic with relevant information and a topic that you can find books and resources that you can use to supplement your thesis and i hope that helps so that sums up all of the questions for today's video i hope you guys found this helpful and please comment down below in the comments tomatoes if you guys listened all the way to the end and if you guys really enjoy these types of videos i might make them more in the future um like just general podcast about concepts or design processes or anything in general or just my philosophy or maybe you just want to listen for an hour to my beautiful voice <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope this video helped you. I'm Rasha Shiruru and I will see you next time.